Uh, I have a word today to preach that is going to be uh, very unusual for me, and uh, and here's how it's going to be unusual. I've never quite been given the instruction to preach the way that God has instructed me today. Let me say that we're so glad that everyone is here. Brother David, it is good to see you in the house of the Lord today. We're glad you're here. Uh, and uh, But I, I want to tell you that God has given me an instruction to step across a boundary that, uh, that I had been very careful not to step across. And uh, I'm humbled today in the instruction of Almighty God. And let me just tell you, when God speaks, you better pay attention. Hallelujah. And uh, so a good portion of what I preach is going to be to my Kingdom Gate family. And that's nothing unusual. But probably a larger portion of what I've come to preach is going to be to every single person who is watching me online. The Holy Ghost is about to speak to you. I want you to settle in. I want you to pay attention because the Holy Ghost has come to speak to you and God is going to move in your life. God is going to do something through His Word today if you will allow it. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to get into the Word today. Uh, and we're going to start in John, the 7th chapter and the 37th verse. John 7 and 37. I've been preaching about this uh, the last few weeks, the last few times I've preached. And here's what John 7, 37 has to say. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8, 38 here. It says, He that believeth on me as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Rivers of living water. And verse 39 says, But this spake he, just in case you were wondering, this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So I want to point out to you that Jesus has an instruction. He's not talking about anything except being baptized in the Holy Ghost. He began to introduce this, uh, the spirit of the Holy Ghost that was to come on the day of Pentecost as the rivers of living water. But he, he began by telling folks that there's something that you're going to have to do. There's an action that you're going to have to take. If you're thirsty, you can sit there and continue to be thirsty. But I've got the, the answer for you. He said that there's something that will fulfill and quench that thirst. He said that you'll never thirst again to the woman at the well. If you drink the water that I'm going to give to you, you're never going to thirst again. I want to tell somebody today that everything you need is in Jesus. You may have searched all over this world. You may have searched in all kinds of philosophy and all kinds of different places in some sort of a political leaning or you may have searched all around looking for something that will fulfill you but I've come to declare just like Jesus said that if you're thirsty that if you have a longing in you that there is uh, an answer today and it is the Holy Ghost it is the Holy Ghost you need the Holy Ghost you need the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, this is the river of living water. But he said something very interesting and, and very vital for our understanding. He said this. He said, if you're thirsty, come unto me. Now, we preach very clearly in this church, and the Word of God declares that if he had not sought after you, because the Word of God said that that 
the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, if the Holy Ghost had not drawn you and gone to where you were, then you could not have received salvation. We know that God came to us and sought after us. But I want to tell somebody today that the thing that is being lost in the church at this moment that is really being just overshadowed today is that when Jesus comes to you there's a dividing line and there is a moment when you have to make a decision I know he sought after me I know I didn't deserve everything that he did to get to me and make his way to me and, and go through mountains and impossibilities and everything that the world just put in the way he came to me he sought after me he came to seek it to save that which was lost Oh, but there came a moment when I had to make a move toward him and I had to step across the line and I had to turn my back on the things of the world. Today, in the average church, you can't tell the difference between the so-called saint sitting in the church and the people in the world. They speak the same way. They dress the same way. Come on now. They watch the same things. They go to the same places. There's no difference between folks sitting in the pews or the seats of the church today, in the average church, and the people in the world. So let me ask you something. If there's no difference, why does anybody want what you have? Come on. Because the word of God says this, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and then I will receive you. There better be a difference in you. And let me tell you something, when the Holy Ghost gets a hold of you, I'm not talking about the fake Holy Ghost where you don't have to speak in tongues. I'm not talking about a warm feeling. I'm not even talking about chill bumps going up your spine. But I'm talking about the same Holy Ghost that Jesus poured out on the day of Pentecost. He said you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. How do I know I've got the Holy Ghost? Well, the initial evidence is that I'm going to speak in another tongue just like they did on the day of Pentecost cost in the book of mark the 16th chapter jesus said you shall speak with other tongues hallelujah that's what he said oh but i don't want to well then i guess you don't want the holy ghost but you know what happens that is the initial evidence of receiving the holy ghost but it's it's about more than learning because look there's there's no such thing as learning to speak in tongues come on somebody if you repeated somebody and 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 just repeated after them you didn't get the holy ghost because the word of god said that they began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance And when God fills you with his spirit, then he fills you with power. You'll receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you begin to walk in a different place with relation to God, in relation with his power in you. Look, uh, today I want to just point out to you that Jesus said all of the, you know, we, we just, we pass right by the instruction part and we go to the promise part way, way, way too often. Oh, we want all of the goodies. We want all of the good things. We want the rivers of living water. We want to be uh, filled to overflowing and we want to never thirst again but we forget at the very beginning of this exhortation Jesus had an instruction he said if you want the rivers of living water if you want the Holy Ghost if you want the life-giving flow you've got to come unto me come unto me that word come is the Greek word erkomai and it means to come obviously from one place to another to come let me let me get this in your head here to come from one place to another 
if you're going to come to Jesus, you got to leave some things behind. If you're going to come to Jesus, you got, look, it's funny because we, we talk about come to Jesus moments, but I'm talking about come to Jesus today. If you're going to come to Jesus, you're going to have to leave some people behind that don't have any interest in serving the Lord the way you do. If you're going to come to Jesus and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're even going to have to leave some Christian brothers and sisters behind that are not ready to receive the word of God and aren't hungry for what you are. So Jesus said, is anybody thirsty? Is anybody want, anybody have a desire for this living water? He said, there's a simple instruction. You've got to come unto me. You've got to come from one place to another. That word, erkomai, in the Greek, it's very specifically speaking both of arriving And returning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, I'm all about people who've never had the Holy Ghost one minute in their life coming and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost just like Jesus said they could. He said right now I'm with you but I will be in you and John the Baptist said I'm just a forerunner and I'm preaching about somebody else that's going to fill you with the baptism of the fire of the Holy Ghost and fire is what he said I want to tell you today I'm all about people who've never received the Holy Ghost being filled with the Holy Ghost. I've been in many situations even around the world where the God has put me in a situation where people that needed the baptism of the Holy Ghost who were hungry were placed somehow in front of me and I had the opportunity to preach even in Israel and all over the country in places that would not have normally has been seeking after what God had for them. People that had drawn a line in the sand by calling their church some denomination name that didn't include speaking in tongues. Oh, but they heard somehow about this preacher and God sent me there. And I thought, God, I don't want to offend anybody. What do you want me to preach? You know what he told me? He said, preach the Holy Ghost. Preach the Holy Ghost. Preach the rivers of living water. And I did. And when I stepped in to obedience, you know what happened? Those churches that had shut the door and drawn a box, drawn lines and, and put their their beliefs into a box. You know what happened? The people began to wake up. The people began to thirst. The people began to get a hold of desire. And they began to line up in those revival meetings. And one after the other, God would fill them with the Holy Ghost. Just like they got on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Preachers, have you ever been right in the middle of your message, right behind the pulpit? And God says, do this or speak this. And you're sitting there, standing there, and you're wanting to try to have some kind of conversation. with. Are you sure? Are you really, really sure? But God knows what he's doing. And I said it before, he's up to something in this moment. Hallelujah. But it said, if you want what I have to give, you've got to come unto me. I'm ready for those who will be newly arrived. I'm ready for the new arrivals, aren't you? Aren't you ready for the new arrivals to come that are just fresh-faced and hungry for God and never even knew what it felt like? I remember the day that Chandler Douglas walked in to a service and something got a hold of him. I began to preach about the Holy Ghost over on 11th Street. And before I could even give any instruction, I just began to say, you can have the Holy Ghost. You know what that crazy man did? He walked up to the front of the church and he didn't stop where the altar should have been but he came right up on the platform and there was desire inside of him he said if I'm going to do it I might as well go for broke he walked right up on the platform and he went down speaking in another tongue filled with the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. He's never been the same. I want to show you today that God is moving. God is pouring out His Spirit at Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, you're going to have to come. You're going to have to come unto me if you want to receive what I have to give you. Come unto me. I want to go through some scriptures in Isaiah, and then we're going to get back into the Gospels a little bit more. But, you know, it's interesting. When you begin to study context and you begin to move outward in a sort of radius around the scripture that the Lord speaks to you and of course you 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 study the entire chapter but then when you begin to look at the even larger context of what God has been speaking in the book in the neighborhood if you will of the scripture that God has laid upon your heart there are some fascinating things that God is speaking to us rather that God has spoken even thousands of years ago and has spoken them for such a time as this. It's unmistakable the things that God put in place that are only just now being fulfilled and being fulfilled by some of the people who are sitting right here in this congregation. I want you to understand your importance in the timeline of the things of God. He wrote about you. Staggering, isn't it? You are the fulfillment of some of these prophecies that were given to Brother Isaiah. Go to the 56th chapter in the third verse. Isaiah 56, 3, Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. This prophecy rings through the corridors of time to this moment. And here's what he says. He says, Don't say something. Don't say something. Because it's not true. You see, the devil is a liar and the father of lies. And he's the one that told you you're separated from God's people. He's the one that told you that there's no more place for you. There's no more uh, ministry for you. There's no room at the table for you and condemned you. Jesus did not come to condemn. Uh, and as a matter of fact, John 3, 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. I want to tell somebody today that there's truth that has broken forth in our generation there are revelations that are being spoken because Jesus said in the book of Revelation he said that when the time comes and when I am going to speak in the last days he said it's only going to be the ones who have ears to hear that are going to receive what I have come to speak all the church has stopped up their ears because what God is speaking does not comport with what they had in mind and the plans that they put in place. Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus has never stopped speaking, but people have stopped wanting to listen to what he has to say. And so here's what the prophecy says about us. He he says, neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. I've heard this so many times in my ministry and in all of these years of being part of Reconciling Pentecostals International in all these years of being the pastor of Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. I've, I've heard this so many times. Well, I've, I've just been cast aside and nobody had any place for me anymore. And I guess God is finished with me. But here's what the word says. Here's what the prophecy declares. Don't say that God has separated you. And don't let the eunuch say, behold, I am a dry tree. Look at verse 7. 
even them, look at this, even them, even them, my God, even them will I bring to my holy mountain that is Zion, that's speaking of the church, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Look at this, their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar for my house, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. You are the fulfillment of this passage. Those that thought that they set you aside for good. Those that thought we've made it clear. We don't want who you are. And we don't want what you would bring to us. Look, some of you had a call of God upon your life. Somebody watching me today, even as a child, even as a teenager, God called you. But there were certain things in your life that called the people of God to separate you. But I want you to understand today the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now. It was never God that separated you. It was not the plan of God that you walk away. Some of you have not felt the Holy Ghost since you were a teenager. Some of you since you were a child. But I want to tell you God is not finished. He said come on. Are you thirsty? It's still alive. It's still real. Come on. Come unto me. And I am going to give you everything that you ever longed for. I've got a river of living water and you're never going to be thirsty again. But you've got to come unto me. Hallelujah. House of prayer for all people. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts. If there was any doubt, then this should eradicate it for you. The Lord God is gathering the outcasts of Israel. Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. I want to tell you today that God did not put an expiration date on his calling. God did not put an expiration date on his promise in your life God is still moving God is still calling and look just because the church has decided that you're an outcast just because your family has decided that unless you toe the line and unless you look like and act like everybody else then there's no place for you I want to tell somebody today that nobody but God can place his hand upon somebody and call them it is the calling of God and the gifts of God that are without repentance I understand trying to have some sort of existence trying to salvage some kind of peace when you've been a castaway or an outcast I understand what that's like but I want to tell somebody in, in this congregation today or somebody that is watching me online, you were never an outcast in the eyes of God. And he loves you more than anyone else ever will love you. He still has a plan for your life. But you're going to have to do something if you're thirsty, if you're hungry for something that is real. He's calling to you today. He says you're going to have to come. That means you're going to have to leave this place. And you're going to have to say, Lord, I love you more. I love you more. I want you more than all of this. And so I'm going to make a move. And I'm going to step across some mountains if that's what it takes. I'm going to walk through some valleys if that's what it takes. But God, I've got to have what you said I can have. I'm thirsty for you. Hallelujah. We're the fulfillment of that prophecy. We're the full. Look, the enemy has tried to to just cause us to feel like we're some sort of, you know, some subsidiary or some kind of stepchild or or some sort of satellite or some sort of, you know, just annex or some sort of just freakish kind of thing that, you know, just trying to appease our conscience. Oh, but I've come to tell you that there's a mighty revelation that God has poured out in this generation. There's a mighty revelation that the rest of the church missed 
And it's called reconciliation. <laughs> My God. Oh, and he used some people that were unlikely. He used some people that had hunger but, but didn't look like they fit. And he said, I'm going to bring the outcasts and I'm going to bring those who've been ostracized and set aside and I'm going to show my glory. I'm going to show miracles. I'm going to show my power. I want to tell somebody today, there are people talking about revival in Kentucky. There are people talking about moving to Kentucky. There are people who have been traveling to Kentucky and, and other places and thank God for any revival that breaks out anywhere. But I've come to tell somebody today that 21 years ago revival broke out in Phoenix, Arizona and it has never stopped it has never stopped the Holy Ghost is moving at Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church you gotta come, you gotta see what God is doing in Phoenix Ooh. hallelujah, you've gotta come unto me if you're thirsty, Jesus said Come unto me. Look, I have seen so many people who had a genuine thirst. You can feel it in your spirit when you're around them. You can feel it, can't you? And they do just tears in their eyes. What can I do? What can I do? And I've got to admit, I've been very, very careful in the past. There is a line of, of ministerial ethics that we uh, have been very careful not to cross. And, and I'll tell you, I've been extremely careful. As a matter of fact, we started the church, this church in Scottsdale, because I didn't want there to be any problem with other churches around. And we, we were in Scottsdale for 10 years before we moved into Phoenix. 10 years because we didn't want there to be any whiff of impropriety. You understand what I'm saying? We didn't want there to be anything that somebody could point to us and, and say that this is an unethical move of God. Look, we had our naysayers nonetheless. We had our people that said that, that you shouldn't have this church. But you know what? I've come to cross the line today because God has moved in this moment. Look, what happened? We moved according to the will of God. And, and we got our first building in 11th Street and we came to 59th Avenue and we've been obeying the Lord. But when we look around, it might look to you like you're barren. It might look to you like you haven't reproduced. It might look to you like you're a dry tree. But I want to tell you today that God is still working His plan. That God has a plan and it involves you. And God is about to break forth on the right and on the left and he's about to use some folks that are filled with the rivers of living water that are proceeding forth from you. So here's what I've come to tell you through the word of God. Stop saying you're barren. Stop saying you're a dry tree. Stop saying you're second rate. Stop saying that you've been separated from what God is doing in this moment, in this hour. Stop it because God has chosen you to hold and to carry and to bear one of the most incredible revelations that has ever come in the, the time of the church. And he's called you to stand up with authority. He's called you to cast the net from the left over onto the right side of the ship. And that is talking about authority. There's authority that you have that almost nobody else has. i got to get through my scriptures here. So that was Isaiah 56. I want to go backwards and just go back to Isaiah 55 and show you something there. Verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth. Come ye to the waters. Huh. My message today is entitled, Come to the Waters. Come to the Waters. The Holy Ghost through Isaiah said, Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. 
Look at verse 2. Here it says, Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. I want to talk to somebody today that you have tried to salvage some kind of walk with God, but the Holy Ghost isn't in it. You've tried to get into social justice causes and into politics, but I've come to tell you that that's never where the Holy Ghost is going to move because, you see, that is some sort of substitute. That is sort of some kind of a, a, a desperate attempt to bring relevance into a broken and ostracized people. But I've come to tell you the same Holy Ghost when you were shouting and running the aisles and speaking in tongues and raising your hands even as a child. That same Holy Ghost is real and he's still pouring out his spirit in this moment, in this day. And he's pouring out the Holy Ghost upon an unlikely people upon the eunuch nation upon people who have been ostracized people who have been set aside people who have been cast out that's what he's doing but you're going to have to come to where God is moving you're going to have to leave the dry places. And look, I want to tell you something. You're never going to have fulfillment in social justice causes. You're never going to have fulfillment in politics. You're never going to have fulfillment studying philosophy. You're never going to feel what God wants you to experience unless you leave it all behind and say, God, for the sake of the call, whatever it takes, God, I'm going to leave it all behind and I'm going to move to where you want me to go. Come unto me, Jesus said. Come unto me. If you're arriving brand new, fantastic. But I want to tell somebody today that that word is, is, that Jesus used, erkomai, is just as much speaking of returning. Come on back. Come on back. Jesus has a place for you. Come on back. The calling of God is still on your life. Come on back. And you can feel that anointing of the Holy Ghost one more time. Come on to Kingdom Gate. There's healing in this place. I want to declare to you that if you'll come to where the waters are flowing, there's healing. There's brand new life for you. All of the things of your past are going to be healed because God has given us right here in Phoenix, Arizona the keys of the kingdom of heaven and they're the keys to bind up the brokenhearted and to set the captives free there's authority there's authority that only those who've experienced it can wield <laughs> hallelujah church you thought that your trials were a waste of your time and a waste of God's uh, plan for you. But I want to tell you, you could never have stepped into what God has in front of this church had you not established authority by walking through some, some terrible times and, and some wounds and some terrible situations and disappointments and, and, and experienced restoration. Come on, somebody that knows what it's like to have no hope and yet all of a sudden have hope in Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. There's reconciliation in this place oh there's anointing for healing and restoration in this place come unto me and I will give you rest come unto me and I will give you the rivers of living water you'll never thirst again but you've got to come you've got to come hallelujah thank you Lord take a look at verse 3 Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Go to verse 6, if you will, in that same chapter. 
It says this, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Do you understand the context of these scriptures that we've preached so many times I can't even count? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Oh, there's coming a time when it's going to be too late. There's coming a time when the trumpet of God is going to sound and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. I still believe that Jesus is coming back. Oh, come on before it's get it's too late. Come on and seek the Lord. You can come and you can find him here. You can come and you can be healed here. You can come and you can be restored. You can come and deliverance will be yours because the word of God declares that it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered and I declare by the word of God, come on whosoever and you will be delivered in this house you will be delivered because it's the word of God <laughs> hallelujah seek ye the Lord while he may be found look at verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Are you hearing me today? You're going to have to leave some things behind. You can't be just like you were on the other side of the Red Sea. You're going to have to leave Egypt behind and cross over into the promised land, over into the things that God has for you. As a matter of fact, it's time to come on, not just across the Red Sea, but you can come across the Jordan because God is moving. God is uh, uh, doing some things uh, that we've never seen before. He's pouring out His Spirit uh, like never before in this last moment uh, before He comes again. Oh, I want to be ready when Jesus comes. I don't want to go to bed at night and wonder what would happen uh, to my soul if the trumpet were to sound. Look, I didn't come to, to bring fear to anybody. I came to bring joy and tell you you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry about what would happen to you should the trumpet sound or should death call upon your door but you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you're washed in the blood you can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you've been called you've been chosen you can know because Jesus is still moving he is still delivering he's still saving he's still baptizing right here in Phoenix Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Just in case you were wondering which ones are better. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. I want to speak to somebody that's watching me right now, and you have reconfigured your pathway to God. You have completely rebuilt what you think makes sense according to the things of the world. But I, I came to tell you that God is not here to negotiate with you. He called you, and He anointed you, and He shed His blood for your salvation, and He's made the Holy Ghost available to you, and He's made anointing available to use you. He's placed gifts in inside of you and you know that every word that I'm speaking is true. You say but pastor there's some things that have gone on that have disqualified me in my life. Oh but I came to tell you you can return to that place of anointing. You can return to that place of being able to hear the voice of God. It's not going to happen by reconfiguring the path according to your own ways. You're going to have to turn your back on your own thoughts. and your own wickedness and come back to where you know God is moving. Look, you cannot imitate the power of God. You cannot imitate 
when the Holy Ghost begins to move, there is no substitute. And look, I'm not telling. Look, if you're going to be honest, the ones watching me online, you know that I'm telling the truth. And the Holy Ghost is beginning to prick your heart as you're hearing this message. And if you haven't turned me off yet, I want to tell you that God has a breakthrough for you. God has a healing for you. God has a miracle for you. But you're going to have to get up and come unto me. Jesus said, if you want all the things that I have, for you hallelujah let's go to verse 11 and then we're going to read 11 and 12 it says so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which i please and it shall prosper in the thing where unto i sent it where to i sent it look god said his word won't return void to him Hallelujah. He's watching over his word to perform it. And let me tell you what's on the other side of you leaving everything behind to come where God is moving. Here's what's on the other side for you shall go out with joy. You're going to go out. You're going to have more joy than you've ever known in your whole life. You're going to be set free because he that knows the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and it's the truth that shall make you free. I want to tell somebody today that you've never experienced anything like having reconciliation you've never experienced anything like being in the spirit of God and worshiping God in spirit and in truth for ye shall go out with joy be led with peace when's the last time you had absolute genuine supernatural peace that passes understanding in your life you can have it you can have it hallelujah the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I want to tell somebody, all you've got to do is come. God will move the mountains out of your way. I said, God will make impossibilities just slip right out of, uh, out of your path. And God will create a pathway. He'll make a way out of no way. He specializes in impossible things because he's almighty God. He's God by himself. But you've got to purpose in your heart and then make a, a decision and then take some action. Hallelujah. I want to just back up one more chapter in Isaiah, the 54th chapter, and show you something here. The first verse, it says, sing, O barren. <laughs> the context of these chapters is blowing my mind. Sing, O barren. Thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Hmm. Huh. Hallelujah. Don't say we're dry trees. Stop saying God has separated us. Stop saying God is not going to, I guess, do what he's done for other churches. No, God is moving. God is pouring out. God is doing miracles. God is, God is speaking like he's never done before. Huh. Hallelujah. My God, I feel the lightning bolt of the Holy Ghost right here in this church. And so I've come to declare God is moving. You don't have to go to Kentucky. You don't have to go anywhere except you got to make a move to where God is calling you. And you might as well come on to Phoenix. You might as well make some plans. You might as well. Look, I didn't start out here, but God took me from California and he said, I've got a place for you to move into my will and to move into something that I've got planned, but it's not going to happen in California. And it brought me to Phoenix, Arizona. He brought this man right here from Wisconsin. He said, I can't have you in Wisconsin because I need you in Phoenix. He brought this man from Illinois. He said, you've got a lot going on, but I need you for something else. And for 20 some years, God has been using this man. There's so many of you 
who've come from this place and said, no, I want what God is doing and I'm willing to come unto God. Come unto what Jesus said. I have a place in. I have a place at the table over there. I'm going to come unto him because that's where he wants me and that's where he's moving. Hallelujah. You're going to have to come unto me, Jesus said. Hallelujah. Good Lord, I want to get through these scriptures. Woo! Hallelujah. This is what God spoke to us before we inhabited this place. He said, enlarge your tent. Enlarge your tent. You're not barren. You just thought you were. You're not separated from what I'm speaking and what I'm doing. You just thought. The, and the church just tried to put that upon you. And your friends tried to declare that over you. But God said that was never my word. I never declared it. Come on. It's time to enlarge the place of your tent. It's to stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Again, he said, you're going to have to do something. This sounds like a lot of work. And let me assure you, it has been. But we have enlarged the place of our habitation and the place of our tent in obedience to the word of God. And with just about 30 people, about 30 people, tiny little church, you know what God did? He gave us this place somehow, some way, with miracle piled on to miracle. And you just don't even understand the, the depth and the breadth of the miracles. We bought this place for $650,000 with two houses and three buildings, including the sanctuary, the education building, the administration building. And, and that was blowing our heads off because we never thought we could afford anything like that. But the miracles stacked upon each other. I want to tell you, yesterday, some valuations came in from the government. And, you know, we, we, we're we exempt because we're a church, but they still send you the, the market values. And do you know what the government has valued this property at? At this moment, it's $3 million. And God did a miracle because a little church said, no, we're going to obey God. We're going to enlarge. We're ready for the harvest. Don't tell me God's not moving. He's doing something new. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, he's a mighty God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. It's time. It's time. It's time. We're ready to break forth on the right and on the left. We're ready. And if you need a place where God is moving, if you need a place to experience revival, if you need a place to receive a miracle, if you need healing in your body, God is healing cancer at Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. God is healing aneurysms at Kingdom Kingdom Gate, Pentecostal Church. There's not a person in here who has not received healing. God heals on a regular basis at this church. Regular basis. If you need healing in your body, come on to Kingdom Gate. If you need healing in your spirit, you've got a bunch of people here who have the ability and the authority to bind up those broken places and, and those wounds and those broken hearts. I want to tell you that you will receive healing from everything in your past. You will receive a, a brand new anointing in your life and you will be set free. You will because we've got the keys of the kingdom of God. We've got the keys that will give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you haven't been able to praise God and feel the Holy Ghost like you used to, come on to Kingdom Gate. Come on to Kingdom Gate. Hallelujah. 
Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. If you haven't spoken in tongues in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years, come on, where the Holy Ghost is still being poured out. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at verse 4. Fear not, for that thou shalt not be ashamed. Thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of your youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. I want to talk to somebody that everything exploded in your life and you got found out good and proper and you got put out of the church even some of you put out of your family but I came to tell you you don't have to be ashamed you can come into a place where all of your shame will be removed and all of those things that the devil tried to destroy you with God is going to give you healing and victory and God is going to give you joy like you've never understood stood like you've never known because we've got the revelation of reconciliation. We've got the revelation that God was never looking on the outward but he's looking on the heart. We've got the revelation. Galatians 3.28 it says that in Christ there's neither Jew nor Greek. Come on somebody say amen. And in Christ there's neither bond nor free. Somebody say amen. In Christ there's neither male nor female. We've got the revelation Revelation that's going to set you free. It's here. It's alive. And well, in Phoenix, Arizona, you can serve God. Oh, the church told you you can't, but God says you can. Come on to Phoenix and be reconciled to God. Come on to Phoenix and have your spirit set free one more time. Come on to Phoenix and experience the cloven tongues of fire upon you like they had in the day of Pentecost. Come on to Phoenix and feel the wind of the Holy Ghost, a rushing mighty wind because it's blowing here and it's blowing again. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. One more verse here. Verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. And the Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. There's one more thing that you've got to know about this church. Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. Come on if you're wondering about how to be in the bride of Christ. Come on if you're wondering what it takes and what it means because God has given us some revelations. As a matter of fact, not too long ago, I wrote a book about it because the Holy Ghost began to speak to me and said these things that I've spoken for 20 years into you you it's time to declare them from the rooftops and so look I want to tell you that if you want to know how to go up when the trumpet sounds if you want to know how to be part of the kingdom of God if you want to know how to be part of the bride of Christ God has a place for you and will help you to understand all of those things come on to Phoenix Come on to Phoenix. There's a church that's on fire. Come on to Phoenix. You don't even understand all of the people who have searched everywhere. Come to us saying, I've been to 50 churches. And one woman said, I've been to 75 churches. And they come and it's always the same. They feel the power of God. Some of them have said, I haven't felt God like that in five years or a different number of years. And God moves upon them. I want to tell somebody today, you can go ahead and search. You can go ahead and try everything that makes sense to you. But I'm telling you, God is moving here. God is moving here. Come on to Phoenix. Come unto me. I'll give you rivers of living water, Jesus said. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, here's what's happening. The church is filled up with self-righteousness, not godly righteousness. Jesus said this. In Matthew 6, 33, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. 
his righteousness. Well, the church world, let me just read something about it here in Romans 10, 3, because this is, this is so exactly what is going on in the church today. It said this, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, willfully ignorant of God's righteousness, and then going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Look, come on to Kingdom Gate because we have made up our minds. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, look, you're never going to find uh, satisfaction and fulfillment in politics. You're never going to find satisfaction and fulfillment in the things that you put together yourself in your own righteousness. Look, self-righteousness is all about being able to feel good about yourself and being able to tell somebody you're not as good as I am because I'm more righteous than you are. No, your righteousness is as filthy rags, Isaiah said. And your righteousness is not going to do anything, but you've got to put aside everything that you are just like John the Baptist said he said I've got to decrease so that he can increase in me it is going to take a sacrifice to seek after the righteousness of God it's not your way it's God's way because God's ways are higher God's ways are better than your ways and let me tell you when you just make the decision to lay it aside all of the things that you thought would bring you happiness and fulfillment and come on to the rivers of living water. Come on and serve the Lord. Come on and give God what He has been asking for. He wants all of you. He wants to bring, bring peace and He wants to bring fulfillment to, to your life, but it's not going to come with you figuring everything out. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Brother Nate, would you come? Matthew 16. Verse 26, back into the Gospels. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 27 says this, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then... He shall reward every man according to his works. I want to talk to somebody that you find yourself suddenly rejected by everybody around you in churches that you've served for many years and people that you've served and that you've loved. Some of you have pastored these churches and you find yourself because of different situations. Look, maybe it was your fault. Maybe it was somebody else's fault. It doesn't matter in the end, but you find yourself today just put aside and, and, and put on a shelf and you feel like there's nowhere for you to go and there's nothing that you can do and you've tried to make a way over here you've tried to make a way over here but I want to tell you if you need somewhere to work for God come on to Kingdom Gate we've got a Bible college right here maybe you can come and learn about the Word of God maybe you can come some of you might be called to teach and instruct in the Word of God if you need a place to come and worship God with the saints who are filled with the Holy Ghost baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with his spirit. Come on to kingdom gate. Come on. The apostolic move of God is still alive and well right here in Phoenix, Arizona at kingdom gate, Pentecostal church. Oh, I want to tell you, God is going to reward according to your works, but come on. You can still work for him here. You can still work for him here. We'll welcome you with open arms. There's not one of us that hasn't been through some things. And we know what it's like for Jesus to pick us up one more time out of the miry clay. Look, I guess the miry clay for me wasn't one time wasn't good enough because I found myself in it one more time. I found myself in it when the church said, oh no, we don't have any place for you. But one more time, Jesus reached down and he picked me up and he took me out of the miry 
I reclaim. He put my feet on the Holy Ghost rock. And I've come to tell you, I've never been happier. I've never had more joy than what I have today because of what God did. It's not something that I did. It's what God did. Come on and experience it for yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just want to bring you to one more chapter. Matthew 11, chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus said here, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Is there anybody that needs some rest in the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Verse 29, Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Learn of me for I'm meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls come on to kingdom gate we'll help you learn about Jesus we'll help you learn things that you never understood before things that God has spoken since you dropped out of things God has continued to speak come on and find out what he's been saying to his church find out the revelations that are still being poured out in this moment at this time come on he's still got a place for you one more verse here verse 30 said for my yoke is easy and my burden is light hallelujah I just want to point out to you that the word come in this passage is a different Greek word it's deity and it means something different than come and arrive for the first time or come and return to where you're supposed to be this Greek word means come now. Come now. There's an urgency that is associated with this word that Jesus used. I want to invite you, come on, but come now. Oh, the time is getting late, and there's a place for you right here in Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. As the pastor of this church, we'll make room for you. We'll be a family that will love you through thick and through thin will be a family that put our arms around you and you'll experience healing here you're going to experience healing here my god everybody in this house has been healed raise your hand if you've been healed in your heart in your emotions in the things of your ah, my god the things of your past in your physical body look at this everybody in this house has had healing applied to them and it'll happen for you if he did it for us he'll do it for you come on come on come on come on it's time come now come now don't delay. God will open the doors. Just say yes. God will make a way. Just say yes. Hallelujah. Stand with me today, church. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just begin to worship God in this house. They're coming in from the left and they're coming in from the right. God is bringing His Word to pass. His Word will not return void. He's watching over it. He will perform it. Hallelujah.